Welcome to the RJLT Economics. Today, let's talk about uh, Credit Suisse again. As you know, uh, Credit Suisse is again needing a quote unquote soft bailout um, from the Swiss National Bank this time. And I want to make two points in today's podcast. First, I want to say that uh, the Credit Suisse situation is not necessarily similar to the situation in American banks. They're the direct calls trigger is the same, and the fundamental calls may be not so much. Uh, but part of it, it is the same. There are some commonalities. And secondly, I want to make a more general comment on the Swiss banking system going forward. First, let's talk about Credit Suisse. Why is it that uh, these uh, Credit Suisse is failing? Again, um, I think uh, um, there are two main causes. But well, of course, the direct trigger is the banking situation in America, and that's basically refocused uh, people's attention on the material weaknesses of uh, Credit Suisse. The fact that uh, it is highly leveraged, that it has a lot of bad assets. And uh, that uh, uh, essentially doesn't have doesn't carry enough cash. That's the that's the direct trigger. But the fundamental reason that Credit Suisse is again having trouble is that Credit Suisse is fundamentally weak. It has weak fundamentals, um, and the, the 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 cause of this fundamentals twofold but one of it is similar to the american banks and that is the interest rate policy monetary policy for the longest term uh for the longest time interest rate have been uh, cut and cut and cut continually until they're in fact in europe in switzerland in particular um the interest rate have been extremely exceptionally low i think in switzerland there was even a period of negative interest rate this made it very difficult for banks to uh, in fact impossible for banks to make money from their traditional commercial business banking business and so what they have to do is to uh they have to create these uh, uh these securities these derivatives they have to take uh, to in to uh, binge on this type of uh, uh, things in order to have a little bit of income, right? At the same time, um, they are also guaranteed that because these banks are too big to fail, so they are also guaranteed that if at some point there's going to be trouble, they really won't uh, be hurt. Right, maybe a couple of bank employees will um, be the scapegoat, but uh, the bank uh, leadership they will receive their bonuses per usual, and uh, the investors, as for the longest time, have been really uh, negligent, uh, for without uh, without really care for this because they knew that they will be bailed out, but currently the situation is a little bit turning. Because uh, the the investors realize that uh, um, even though in the long term they will be bailed out, uh, they for the short term they may they may have some liquidity problems. Uh, uh, how to say uh, to uh, cashing out their shares? That is the, really the ne- the call the negligence of uh, the investors. We're not really concerned about them, uh, but let's talk about the the banks. Um, so that's the number part of the reason. And another part of the reason, and this is, I think, is unique to Swiss banks. And it's something that uh, I will build on, on this, in the second part of today's podcast. Uh, and this is sanctions on Russia. Now, I know that a lot of uh, Russophiles have been saying that the American banks are failing because, uh, um, primarily because of sanctions on Russia. Uh, I have my doubts. I think it really is a cyclical issue that uh, even without the conflict in Ukraine, um, these American banks would uh, have, should have experienced similar uh, problems one, maybe sooner or later, let's say. But uh, and the reason is that the American economy and the, the Russian economy are not so tightly knit. They're not so tightly connected. Um, the, for 
you could even argue that sometime in a lot of the fields, American and the Russian exports are substitutes. And indeed, American energy has been in some markets substituting, not necessarily fully, but uh, substituting Russian energy products. So um, it's the, the two economies are not necessarily uh, so tightly, tightly, con tightly connected. The same cannot be said about European economy, because sanctions on Russia greatly increase the cost of um, the cost of energy and raw materials in Europe. But in Switzerland, in particular, it's not necessarily the cost of energy and raw material that's hurting the Swiss banks. It really is the bank seizures, because um, the uh, Russian corrupt officials. The Russian oligarchs, they have put a lot of money in Switzerland with the hope, with the understanding, with a, uh, with a wrong belief of uh, misplaced uh, faith that um, the Swiss banking system is sound, that it's safe, that uh, privacy and personal property are absolutely are held uh, uh, t with a very high regard and guaranteed in Switzerland. But this Russian sanction has proven that it is not so. And uh, here there are two effects. Number one, on the one hand, there are a lot of Russian oligarchs, Russian corrupt officials who put their money in Swiss banks, okay? But then they take out loans from banks such as Credit Suisse. And they use these loans to make purchases of uh, private jets and, uh, you know, um, uh, boats, uh, uh, yachts, yachts, right? They, 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 to fund their lavish lifestyle, right? But when the bank sees their assets, these loans became bad loans. That's one, uh, uh, one part of it. It's, uh, so the banks, even though they seize the assets, the, <laughs> the loans actually are leveraged such that, you know, there's uh, um, the, the asset they see is actually is probably not as uh, highly valued as the loans that uh, they essentially have to forfeit. That's part of the reason. And another part of the reason is that uh, by showing the world that the Swiss banking system is not what is advertised to be, uh, they have a cash flow problem, right? We know that, and this is a fact, that the African, the Middle Eastern, and Asian investors, and maybe also Latin American investors, and not, in, not necessarily investors, but oligarchs, businessmen, corrupt government officials, and uh, let's just say people, uh, ha high, um, high wealth uh, individuals, these people, um, high net wealth, uh, high net worth individuals, they are withdrawing, not all of them, but a lot of them are withdrawing uh, their funds from, um, from Swiss banks. And this is, I think, a very serious issue for, uh, for Switzerland, because the banking system without, with, uh, without these capital, um, the risks that they have taken in previous years, in last decade, is compounded multiple fold because, um, yeah, basically they have uh, uh, less capital uh, against uh, uh, more exposure, right? So they, they got even higher leveraged. And that is how I think the most fundamental reason uh, for, the, uh, for, 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 for the problem in Credit Suisse. Now let's move on to the second part of today's podcast, the future of Swiss banking system. I think uh, there's not much to say, very little, so I'm, I will try to be brief this time. Uh, I think the Swiss banking system uh, has lost its credibility. The, the idea is that uh, you, basically, you know, they ostensibly protected the National Socialists because of their, uh, you know, um, because their their um, commitment to privacy, to personal property, 
But now, simply uh, just by the stroke of a pen, they completely wrote that off with the Russians. And they have shown to the world that perhaps a few decades ago, rightly or wrongly, the Swiss banking system was trustworthy. But today, um, in fact, also in the last decade, we know that Swiss banks have been leaking information to the American regulators about uh, account holders. So um, um, essentially, the Swiss banking system is not really trustworthy, is not really sound even, uh, and uh, it certainly does not respect privacy. And uh, this means that a lot of the people high net worth individuals, they want to spread their risks. And people who are corrupt government officials, oligarchs, they need to take their money out of Switzerland because Switzerland is clearly politicized. They want to withdraw their money and put it somewhere that is depoliticized where their money will be uh they can they can always take out their money uh regardless of the global political situation that is a key and once this uh this trust is broken i don't think in our lifetimes switzerland can earn back this trust it's completely broken and this is really detrimental this is disastrous for Switzerland. Now we can, uh, there are a lot of Russophiles and talk about uh, the damage done to the to the Germans and uh, because of the sanctions. And indeed, the Germans are suffering a lot, but the Germans um, haven't lost their, their, their credibility. The Germans still have their name, uh, rightly or wrongly, perhaps in my opinion, partially misplaced um, their name for being you know, um, very good engineers, they make good engineer products, good optics, good uh, machine tools, good machines, um, good cars, etc. They still have that name. And uh, if at some point in the future, they, uh, and they indeed have very high engineering skills, um, if in the future they manage their uh, cost problem, uh, they can become competitive again. But the the Swiss are different. For them, it really is just their names, the guarantees, the trust. And without the trust, the Swiss banking system is just another bank. Uh, it's just, just another banking system. Uh, why do you put your money in a, in a Swiss bank rather than putting it in a Singaporean bank, a Japanese bank, uh, even an American bank, it's not so much a difference. And uh, that really greatly weakens the business model in Switzerland. So I would not be surprised that uh, the lifestyle that uh, the Swiss have taken for granted, they have taken as a matter of course, uh, will not necessarily be sustained in the decades to come. I think we will see that as the financial, global financial order is reshaped, uh, the importance of Swiss francs and the importance of, of the Swiss banking system uh, will, be, will, be, will be weakened. I think uh, uh, that is really disastrous. I think uh, the Swiss people, uh, and in this case, don't have a lot to blame by themselves because I like uh, some places where elections are just shows in Switzerland, they indeed elected the government and uh, they which ca carried out the policies that are supported by the public. And uh, I think I would take this as, um, I would ascribe this as basically um, having lived lives that are too wild, too, too comfortable, that people have forgotten, Swiss people have forgotten how their ancestors worked very hard to uh, gain the advantageous position uh, as they did, as they do today. And uh, well, I don't I necessarily feel sorry, but I think uh, a lot of Europeans and Swiss in particular should feel sorry about it. 
And uh, in time, in due time, I think they will surely recognize it and uh, regret what they have done. Thanks for listening. Uh, check out my website, drglt.com. Have a great day.